In this episode of MPTV, we visit Barry of Barry's Cheesesteaks down in Louisville, Kentucky. Two locations. This is the second location that just opened. We're going to talk about how he went from the streets of Philadelphia doing the wrong stuff to how he came to Louisville and he's helping a lot of youth and this community do the right things. Come on. Hey, what's up? It's Matt, and we are here at Barry Cheesesteaks down in Louisville, Kentucky with the man, the myth, the legend, Barry himself. What's going on, Barry? How you all doing today? We're up here on Bardstown Road at our second location, and this is the place to be if you want something good to eat. I, I can attest to that. I just had it. The, the sandwich was the size of my head. I think I'm going to probably take a nap after this. Well, we were hoping not to feed you that good because we <laughs> want to make sure this show goes over well. <laughs> <laughs> so the concept of MPTV, uh, this podcast, is to help tell stories yeah. uh, from restaurant owners, general managers, operators, people in the business so that restaurants can figure out, number one, how to make a little more profit, MP, yeah. but also just become you know, better at what they do, better for the community because Restaurants are a community gathering price. Yeah, I think a lot of times that that's you know, people don't realize that this is a this is a getaway. It's a fun time. So yeah. Yeah. I guess tell us your history, your background, how you got in this business. Well, it, it starts really long. It's kind of wow. I'm born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I must admit, I am Pittsburgh down, Pittsburgh Pirates, Pittsburgh Steelers, <laughs> Penguins, whatever. I'm down with it. But uh, I traveled a lot back and forth up to Philadelphia up in Norristown in the suburbs. And uh, for a large portion of my life, I was out there just selling drugs, cocaine, heroin, and uh, just in all kinds of trouble. And, uh, but there was people up there in Philly who understood that I had some talents too. I could cook. I couldn't read very well, but I was able to cook. And there was this man that uh, I'll never forget him. His name is Gary, he owned a restaurant called Garibaldi's. And I thought Gary was Italian and I thought that was an Italian name. But what it was, was Gary is Baldi because he had it to pay on. <laughs> and so he taught me the art of cooking cheesesteaks okay. and cooking them in such of a way that you never want to send one out that you wouldn't bite. Love it. Well, I tell you what, I, I had the cheesesteak. I can attest that Somebody would have wanted to bite that besides me. It was good. Yeah, well, we trained our cooks not to bite them no more. <laughs> People were tired of getting those bit sandwiches. No. But uh, it's, it's a great thing because it's, it's more than cheesesteaks. It's about trying to help change lives. Yep. Trying to save somebody from some of the things that I went through. And uh, giving them a chance to be able to you know, even own one of these places. Hey, come on over. Oh, speaking of cheesesteaks. Hey, get a look at that there, Facebook. Uh, I got ready to say Facebook family. But I'm so used we'll, to saying We'll be that. on Facebook, we'll be everywhere. We're going to say the Matt family. Get, there a, we go. get a look at that. But this is one of our uh, eight inch sandwiches that we serve. And this one has that cheese sauce and some peppers in there. And uh, I'm going to have to make them move this because that, that's looking kind of good. Oh, I, I might have a second sandwich. I might have food <laughs> on my face. Yeah. So the, the restaurant has a little deeper meaning to it yeah. from a standpoint of cost. Tell us about that and how that came about. Well, uh, 2013, I was pastor in the church. A lot of kids from the west end of Louisville, uh, some getting in trouble and things. And so I had to try to create jobs. And the first thing I'd done was created jobs in the summer camp at our church. Then I took them through a program called Junior Chefs Program. Okay. I told them, I said, listen, it's not bad if everyone doesn't go to college, but let me help you with a skill. And so we started teaching them how to cook. And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, this big idea jumped into my head. It was like, hey, we're going to open up a restaurant. And I must admit, man, uh, if I, know, if I knew what I know now, <laughs> back then, that, that would have waited a while. But it became, you know, a, a business that helps people rebuild their lives, helps keep some people off the streets, 
we got felons who work here. Yep. One of them one day came to me and he was just happy to have a job. He said he's been looking for a job for two years and no one would hire him because of his record. And so uh, I gave him a, a job and he, he was nervous. He is like, uh, well, you know, I got a record. And I kind of laughed. I said, it's probably not as long as mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got something in common. Yeah, yeah. I said, but let's just change that around, man, and let's show the world what you really made out of it. Yeah. You got good stuff. And so through these restaurants, we've been able also to do community events. Uh, we help serve about 6,000 free meals. We help uh, homeless shelters, 900 pounds of chicken to each shelters and things. Wow. And, and we would give that away. And uh, this year, I was a little hurt because the way everything's going on, that I couldn't do my birthday event. Okay. Every year when it's my birthday, that's community day. And we just want to feed the community, have a good time, you know, play some music. Everybody get out there, can't dance, you know, or yeah, doing, have doing a good time. old stuff. And so we just want to impact lives, make a difference. Yeah, there's two things you said there that stood out to me is, uh, number one, I think that there's so much pressure on people that college is the only way to succeed. Yeah. And like I've, my company now, we're 20 plus employees. I could honestly not tell you if any of them have a college degree. Yeah. I've never asked. Yeah. I'm like, can you perform a skill? Yeah. Are you a person that I want to be around? Yeah. And can we work together? And that's, that's a big thing. Yeah. Or, or, you know, just being teachable. Yeah. And, and I tell people, you know, sometimes they'll come to me, well, I know how to do this. I know how to do that. I say, well, that's fine. All we need you to learn is what we're going to show you. Yeah. You know, don't worry about messing up. We all mess up. I say, but there'll come a time in your life in here where you just want to take pride and you want to push out something great. Yeah. And uh, I think through my whole company, there's only three of us that have been to college. Yeah. And the rest of them, uh, even at the other location on 2nd and Oak Street, we just genius. I mean, we got some managers that I'm Amazing. thankful. Yeah. Because uh, there have been plenty of days that, you know, I would have been way behind if it wasn't for them. Yeah, the other thing I think, too, is the, uh, we all need redemption from something. And yeah. I remember we had a boat, in our, I don't know if I've never told you this story, but I, I've probably never told on the podcast. We had a boat in our RV dealership we owned. And about three years into it, I was in my mid 20s running the whole thing. Wow. My dad was sales manager, my brother was service. I was kind of like the in charge of stuff. I don't know how. Somehow I got, I got the short straw. <laughs> and this guy walks in. You know who Suge Knight is? The, yeah. the right. guy walks in, looks identical yeah. to Suge Knight. Like, dude is gigantic, looks just like him. And he's applying for a job to work on the lot, clean boats, do that kind of stuff. And I had never been around that element as far as somebody had a, a hat passed like that. Yeah. But it didn't bother me or not, you know, either, either way. And he goes, hey, Mr. Plapp, I, I, I got a question for you. I said, yeah. And I'm like, one, he's older than me. And I'm going to tell Mr. Plapp. So I come out and what's up? He's like, well, I got to this last question on the application. And I want to be truthful. He's like, have you ever been convicted of a, of a felon? Yeah. Felony. And I said, okay. And he's like, well, I have. I want to let you know my past to start off on the right foot. I'm like, okay. And he told me he just got out of prison for dealing drugs. Yeah. He had been doing this. He was 13. And uh, he went to jail for a long time and he got out. And I said, well, he goes, I'm guess I won't get the job. I go, I don't really care. I mean, are, are, you, are you honest? Yeah. He's like, yeah. He goes, I don't, I don't do any of that stuff anymore. I, I do smoke some weed here and there. He's like, but I don't do that. I said, well, will that affect you during the day? He's like, no, sir. I said, yeah. have fun. He worked for us for a while. He had, was a great guy. Yeah. And I, it, it, I could see in his eyes that when he got to that question, he had got to that question and had asked that same conversation. And people said, get out. Yeah. Okay, break time. Restauranters, it's Matt. And if you're watching MPTV, you're obviously interested in improving your business. What if I told you you could finally take the hope and pray out of your marketing plan and spend money and see results? You see, most marketing starts with the same exact tactic. You gain the attention of somebody, but that's where the majority of it stops. What we do with the ROI engine is help you gain amazing attention, which drives gigantic engagement. That engagement leads to customers to tell us who they are, meaning they opt into your email, text, and birthday program, and then we drive them to buy something. We've got a lot of great programs that can help you, and we'd love to have a conversation with you. If you're interested, it's easy. 
Check out ROIexperts.net. You can schedule an appointment and we'll hop on a call with you. Worst case scenario, you learn how to market your restaurant like you've never heard of before. Back to the action. Yeah, and, and I tell you, it's such a blessing to get an opportunity. Uh, I remember I applied for a job at a place called Spring Meadows years ago. And so on the application, it was talking about being convicted uh, of, of, of a crime. And so uh, do you have convictions? So I asked the one man, I said, is this talking about here in Kentucky? <laughs> and he said, yeah, just Kentucky. I said, just Kentucky? He said, yeah. So I wrote on there, no, I have not been convicted. <laughs> in Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky. And uh, I got the job, I would do great, and I would share my background and, you know, my redemption and things. And one day, the, uh, the director of the program came, pulled me up to the office, and he pulled out these papers. And he said, he said, Barry, this is your criminal background. And my mouth dropped, and he winked at me. He said, but you're doing a great job here, and you've been really helpful with us, with our youth. And uh, I was able to uh, maintain that job till it was time for me to leave on my yep. own terms. And so sometimes people miss out on great workers because they're so busy dealing with their past, they don't know what their present's gonna be like and how they can help us with our future. Yeah. So let's talk about, uh, you said about the restaurant business. If you, if you knew what you knew now, then you might not take in the path. What have been a couple of the biggest learning curves for you being a restaurateur <laughs> that you're like, wow. Food taxes. Food taxes. taxes. <laughs> that, that, that tax that you have to do once a month, sales. Yeah. I didn't have a clue about it. Yeah. And uh, you know, we selling food and I'm like, okay. I, I didn't know. And this lady came down one time, she's an accountant, and she introduced herself to me. She says, I've been watching you on television, the things you do, I'm here to help you. And so she came in and uh, she said, have you paid any food taxes, sales taxes? I said, well, when I go to the store, we pay them. And she looked at me, she said, no. <laughs> and so she said, can I see any envelopes that you've been getting? So I gave it to her and she says, this has to be done monthly. So she helped me get it all done. And then she taught me how to do it myself. Yep. And we sent out those monthly things. And uh, that was a surprise to me. And then dealing with certain vendors. Okay. Vendors can be really, uh, I don't want to give them a bad name, but they, they can be really... Uh, one-sided. One-sided. They can really know how to work a new person yep. and get them to overspend at times. Okay. And I remember I, I got caught up in overspending and then uh, I just started going down to uh, Restaurant Depot and I started learning how to do a daily budget yep. and learn how to flip that money daily yep. and things got better. And, and so, but as we grow, we do deal with a company and they're treating us right. But uh, you got to be careful when you open up a business with vendors you get, with promises they make, because they'll make it sound good, but in the long run, that bill is going to come and it's going to eat you up. Yeah, it's, it's it, those two topics are, are good ones because I think a lot of times people don't want to admit little things like that they didn't know in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, I remember starting my business and you don't think about it. There's some things you take for granted, like what a desk costs. I remember going to buy my first desk and I'm like, oh snap, desk costs that much? Like, yeah. okay, I had a free desk at my other place. <laughs> but you know, sales tax and zoning and you know, when you can hang banners, when you can't, all those are little things that I think a lot of times we follow our passion into something. Yeah. And when you follow your passion, then you start picking up the little pieces and putting them together. And if you don't own your property, you know, you, you got to be really careful when you're renting commercial property yep. about really understanding that whole process. Uh, you know, like one of the things, something happened to our building, and so we're calling the landlord. And they're like, no, you're responsible for that. Yep. And I said, hold up, I've been here one month. I am not going to buy you no air unit. <laughs> I said, you know what, we'll be on the news and we'll fight about this and I'm going to win because I'm going to bring up 20 churches and they're going to be out here with the Lord. I'm going to bring up the old ladies and they're going to be that you cheating, Barry. And so there was things that, 
you know, you have to understand when you sign that lease, yeah. and, and we're excited, uh, maybe 20% of people read the whole lease. Oh yeah. You know, and then you have guys who will bring you to an empty building and they'll do build outs for you. And then a portion of the build out you'll be responsible yeah. for. And, uh, and, and there's some called the developers and there's some good guys that uh, can help you through those processes. But you gotta be careful when you sign that lease. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's different from when you lease an apartment uh, the owner comes in and fixes certain things. Here, I said, this ain't fair. I paid you all this money, and I got to pay for this. I, got, I said, I can't even take it with me. Yep. You know, I told one person, I said, if I put a walking in here, it's walking out when we walk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had recently had Kelly Gray uh, as a guest on the podcast, and she's the uh, she's with Hothead Burritos and Rapid Fire Pizza, yeah. and she's a commercial real estate's her background and that's what she talked about a lot so if you're listening to this watching it go back and watch there's a lot of good stuff because like you said you got a dream you find an, an ideal location yeah and by the time it gets down to brass tacks and looking at that paperwork yeah. you're so excited yeah. you're amped up and and there's stuff in there I remember looking at a lease from my current office it was like 25 pages yeah I called my buddy who's an attorney I'm like I don't know what half this is yeah yeah and uh you, and and I advise everyone have a good lawyer yes. who deals in land, yep. who deals in land sales, who will look at every contract and everything for you. Uh, our lawyer, you know, there's, we, we get borders and borders, and they handle, you know, now whenever papers come, the, 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 the deal is with them is, Barry, you don't sign nothing till Harry reads it. <laughs> He said, you don't sign a thing until yep. Harry reads it. Don't be anxious. And so they get our paperwork now. They go over everything. Uh, and they, uh, you know, we, we got the, the franchise deal. Yep. I was just happy off the word franchise deal. Harry was like, hold up, brother. We got to make sure that you're taken care of. And protected. And protected because uh, your name, he says, that's your name. That's your brand. That's you. And you got to make sure you stay well protected and, and with good people who's not going to take advantage of you. Yeah. And you, before that, we were talking about vendors. And I think that's something a lot of people are naive. Oh, uh, we, when we were in the boat business, I'll never forget this. <clears throat> we were young, me, me and my dad and brother, we came up really fast. We grew the business really quick. And I'll never forget, we're at a boat meeting and I'm talking to this guy and I still don't, I can't remember his name, but he always pulled up in a big million dollar motor home uh, <laughs> and you knew he did well and he yeah. carried himself really well. And one day we're at the pool because they had these meetings you'd go to like every three months. Yeah. We're at the manufacturer's meeting and he said, Matt, when was the last time you saw me on stage? Because everybody got on stage, got awards. Yeah. I said, I've, ne I've never seen you on stage. And he's like, exactly. He's like, you know who gets on stage? I said, who? He said, the people that buy what they sell you. He's like, they'll keep calling you every week with a new offer yeah it's not and he's like you'll see i never take the offer i take what i know i can sell yeah what i know i can turn that's going to be here a certain time he's like because there's costs involved there's weight in this business there's waste and he's like those yeah. manufacturers those reps those companies they're, they're meant to sell you something yeah and there's a you know, granted there are some great ones yeah that have your vested interest and yeah. you build that relationship but there's also other ones out there that just want to see one more item go out the door yeah i, I sat in a meeting with a guy and we were kind of having it out. And uh, he said, I said, well, you know, I know you're working for your commissions. Well, you know, uh, I make my money by the case. And when he told me that, this thing lit up. I said, oh, that's why you want me to order 50 cases a week <laughs> of steaks and, and 10, uh, 20 cases of fries. It's all about the case, case. with you, times two. You know, and, uh, two, well, one location did more than the other. And so I started learning. I yep. said, okay. And so we got with a company that they, of course, is by the case, but they don't want you to buy a case that you don't need. Yep. And then they want to come in, then they'll come in and help us do little things with food costs, work with us on things we don't know. Uh, up in Philly, we knew how much goes into a state. We just knew it. We knew how to do it. But when I opened up here, you know, there's some guys, I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. And so you had to get certain things to teach them how to major and all that. 
And uh, some of these companies will come in and help you with those things. And some of them just want to keep bringing new product to you that you've never used. So talking about that, talking about managing people, uh, what have you found? What are some things you found to help with that? Because I recently talked to uh, a couple of guys that talked about it. They said, man, Matt, you know, I think somebody in, some guys in the kitchen have hands that are bigger than others. Yeah. And so like this order of fries might be that big, this big, and that can add up. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we got some things, you know, to uh, measure fries and to, to measure the meat. One thing, though, about berries is we do give a little more extra meat than your regular places. Yep. Uh, yes, it can cost us, but later on, as numbers increase, you start seeing okay. that you gave that portion away and it's actually brought you five more customers and things. And then when it comes to managing people with different personalities, men and women, one of the things I ran into is we got some men who can't take an instruction from a woman. We got some women who think this is their restaurant. I had to tell one, that's a Barry. <laughs> I'm Clyde Needham's son. I'm Barry, <laughs> you know? And, and so what I do is I, I kind of invest time into everybody. I really do. I'll call you up. I'll, I'll meet with you on our days off. I do what I call community meals, take everybody out, sit down and, you know, talk about it. I ask about their families and, you know, get a chance to know. What happens is, uh, as they see that you really love them, and it's just genuine love, women don't feel disrespected here. I'm a married man. Uh, that saying, it's cheaper to keep her, it's cheaper to keep her. As business grows, it's cheaper to keep her. Uh, we don't want women to feel uncomfortable. We, uh, I got a no flirting policy. I will throw you behind out, you know? And it's just about building relationships that it comes to the point that they start loving you back. Yeah. I came in, wasn't feeling well. They notice it. Mr. Barry, you need to go home today. Uh, no, nah, let me cook. No, nah, you ain't getting on the grill. I'll do this. No, nah, you ain't getting in there. I've been kicked out of this restaurant. I was kicked out of Preston. <laughs> I was kicked out of Second and Oak. And what it showed me was these folks saying, if you go down, we're out to the game. Yeah. You start loving on them, giving them love, and that love starts coming back. Some people rack your nerves, but that love element. You know, my godson who worked for me, he should have been fired. For real. Today I should have fired him. But I know this young guy loves me because he was running the streets doing nothing with his life. Now he can run that kitchen. So that's the, the key thing, dealing with people, loving them, respecting them. I don't cuss. Uh, some of them do. Uh, some days I say, oh, you're going to make me say a curse word. And I'll say, uh, get that donkey out of here, <laughs> you know. But uh, it's just a great feeling. You loving them and they loving back on you. What about, uh, last thing I'll cover, what about bringing uh, the church into the restaurant? Because I'm sure that's got to be a challenge to some extent. Well, when we uh, first started, started, you know, of course, I still had the church and everything. And uh, the church was doing good. One Sunday, I'm in there, I'm like, yeah, the restaurant is starting to grow. I'm like, yeah, this is the life. And one day, I was praying, and the Lord put in my heart, said, it's time to come up out of here. And I was like, God wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. And he was like, it's time to come up out of here. And I waited a whole year, and I started literally seeing people leaving. And I was in tears. I was like, what did I do wrong? And the Lord put my heart again, it's time to leave. So as I agreed to leave, now, mind you, my church is maybe 130 members. Maybe I'm reaching about uh, 99 people, you know, a week. As that happened, this young man named Javier Cruz comes in and he makes a little video. And so we made a joke 
And I said, maybe we'll reach a thousand people, you know? And he was like, yeah. And he came back, he was like, your, your video reached 5,000 people. I was like, get out of here. And so I started learning that I could share good things through the restaurant, through the videos, and ended up with 30,000 followers. Yep. And I had a guy from Florida talking to me. Man, I've been following you. I love the things you're doing and the things you're saying. And so I'm, I'm still ministering, but it's on a new level. And it's a level to help just everybody just feel some good love, no judging policy. Uh, I don't have a heaven or a hell to put anybody in. But I do want to tell them there's a better life. If I can help you, fine. If not, let's get you to where you can get the help. So the, actually the church has grown from 130 members to 30,000. Tens of thousands. Yeah, and they don't send no offerings. <laughs> Restaurant owners, did you know Matt has free online marketing courses that teach you how to successfully market your restaurant? Email support at mattplapp.com to get access to the courses and a free social media content calendar. So uh, I always wrap up every episode by putting you on the spot and saying, okay, you're, you're having a one-to-one -one conversation with somebody who's wanting to be the next Barry Cheesesteaks or his own brand or her own brand. What's one piece of advice you would give them that you think is instrumental in success in the restaurant business? got to be transparent. Okay. Uh, if you're transparent, people will see that, yeah, you make a lot of mistakes, but you're transparent about it, and you're teachable. And through being transparent, man, that shows integrity. Uh, the greedy businessman who wants it all don't succeed. But if you just get little by little with integrity, being transparent, you could gain a whole lot more than just the money you hope to uh, make one day. I like it. Love it. It's the first time I've heard that one as far as in that context. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, that's, I almost killed myself getting money. Yeah. I was selling cocaine, heroin. I was out there. I would get 5000 a day, and my day consists of, I would come on the block at 4 in the afternoon, I would just hang out to 11, and I could get five grand, getting it every day. Yep. But I got so strung out, tried to OD myself, tried to commit suicide, all in the thing of trying to get this money. Yep. So I've learned not to let money master me. Yep. When we, uh, when we got out of the boat business, we, back in 2008, the economy collapsed. We were getting out of it anyways, and the economy said, eh. Yeah. You're out of it a little faster, <laughs> and we lost a lot of money. But the one thing I took from there when, we, when I launched my firm I have now was I didn't want to make business decisions based on money. I yeah. wanted to make business decisions because too many times in the boat business, we were at the, the, under the hand of the banks. Yeah. And we made a lot of bad decisions that weren't, you know, it weren't because of money. Yeah. And I, I told myself, I said, when we start this marketing firm, we start helping companies, I don't want to make a decision for money. I want to make a decision because it's the right decision. Yeah. The money will come down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank you. Man, thank you, man. Bless your hearts. We appreciate you coming out here, man. I appreciate you having me. If you're in the Louisville area ever, make sure you get down here to Barry's Cheesesteaks. It's the size of your arm. It's filling. It's amazing. And these fries, by the way, those... Yeah, those that's the be right. Those Cajun, for the Cajun fries, that, yeah. that's what you need. So, look, 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 it's called be right, because they be right when you get them. They be right when you get them. Well, cool. <laughs> well, these, these fries be right, and we be right back with the next episode. We'll see you around. Thank you.